Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a group that came onto the music scene in Philadelphia in 1976. They have numerous albums out, but you may know them for their hits, Folk by Folk, Warm Weather, and Mount Airy Groove. This group is celebrating over 40 plus years of being together, and they still bring down the house when they perform. I am excited to have them on the show today. Please welcome Mr. James Lloyd and Mr. Curtis Harmon, also known as Pieces of a Dream, to the show. Aloha, gentlemen, and welcome. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, thank you. Just having me, Gwen. How you doing? <laughs> First of all, I want to thank both of you for being here on the show because I know it is late where you are, and I know it's past your bedtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It is now, yeah. It, it, is, it is now, but I yeah, thank you. We're so old much. now, so we gotta go to bed early. Oh know? wow! <laughs> well, but, thank uh, you. And again, this is about the time we we probably still be on stage. You know? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. And that's what I hear from from a lot of the artists. But thank mm -hmm. you, and also thank you, Curtis, for rep representing Philly. I'm I'm yeah. happy you're wearing your Philly Eagles. <laughs> represent, <laughs> represent. <laughs> That's right. So, so we're going to go ahead and get this started. Both of you started playing music at an early age. So I want each of you to tell me um, how you got your start in music. Curtis? I, um, I started actually playing drums. Well, actually playing what I would say beats at eight years old. Um, I had a knife in this hand and a fork in this hand playing on my brother's, my little brother's high chair mm -hmm. and playing uh, beats to uh, Rare Earths Get Ready. And then my mother kind of got mad and said, told my father she, he better buy me a drum set or <laughs> she kills us both. So he ended up buying me a toy drum set and I started playing beats on that. And then he uh, put me in school for uh, music and, and drum lessons. And then I started playing a little bit with his band uh, before I met James. And then once I got to uh, Ada Lewis Middle School, you know, James and I met and sit along with uh, a third member, Cedric Napoleon, and we kind of took off from there. Wow. James, how'd you get your start? Um, I started actually when I was uh, six years old. Um, actually, I just, it, I started by imitating my first grade teacher who had a piano in her room. And, you know, so I was just sort of imitating what she was doing. And then uh, she, next thing you know, I was taking piano lessons and, um, uh, you know, I started just regular classical lessons at, at uh, six. And uh, then I got a, a scholarship to a, a music school, settlement music school. In okay. Philadelphia, yeah, mm -hmm. was, uh, uh, ten years old, and um, and when I was twelve, that's when I was at Ada Lewis, and and then that's when I uh, at the actual pieces of a dream started mm -hmm. forming and and uh, becoming a thing and and playing together, and you know it all started with like uh, a, a talent show and and dinner dances and wedding receptions and block parties, block parties. <laughs> like <in> base, wow <laughs> you know um and it, it turned into this and it's it's still going you know uh, it'll be not long that curtis and i are celebrating our 50th anniversary yes yes of, together you know? now what high schools did y'all go to Okay, we went to, we graduated from Martin Luther King High okay. School, mm -hmm. uh, but we also all, we went to uh, High School of Creative and Performing Arts in Philly. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, we went there when it first opened up. Um, oh, Matter wow. of fact, they didn't even have chairs. You know, we were like <laughs> sitting on the floor. I'm serious. We were sitting on the floor. Right. It had carpet. It was, you know, comfortable. But uh, you know, you're writing on carpet and your pencil is going through the paper. It's like, oh, that's fine. But um, yeah, and the, the high school was on the 16th, 17th, and 18th floor of mm -hmm. the, you know, the college was through from the second through the 15th floor mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of the building, right? Kurt, is that the- Yeah, right, that's right, that's correct. Okay. And that and was, the, we were actually across the street from the College of Performing Arts, but 
And the three of us were actually taking college harmony and theory. Wow. And then we had to go back over to the high school to finish class. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. And then you had like Gamble and Huff that was like right across the street. Right across the street, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Look, it's funny because I know where all these places are in Philly. Mm -hmm. So this, this is great. Now, Grover Washington Jr. was very interest, instrumental, right? In, yes. in getting you guys off. Can you tell me about that? Well, Grover, um, we were actually the house band for a, a TV show that you probably remember uh, called City Lights. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. We were, the, we were the house band for about 13 weeks on that show. And um, Grover actually performed on that show they it was kind of they would have different artists and and acts on the show and grover actually was in in one of the weeks on the show and heard us play he came and he was going to play to a track though he had his uh actually hit wine light album out at the time mm -hmm. and he was going to go ahead and play to a track but he heard us play and said wait a minute i want to play with them so we ended up playing mr magic together and it came off very well. Um, we had a ball. And then not long after that, we ended up playing at the Schubert, uh, I'm sorry, the Bijou Cafe, where he yes. did his live album. And then he showed up there that night, played with us, surprised everybody, and then announced that he was starting a brand new production company and we would be his first property. Wow. Now, how did the name Pieces of a Dream come about? I know you guys started out in high school, but how did that name physically come about? How did you guys decide? You Go ahead, to tell them that one, Kurt. Oh, we went, well, we went through a slew of names. I think our first name was actually Galaxy when we did the talent show in, in junior high school. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to uh, Touch of Class and then Classic Touch before we finally decided, before we finally landed on Pieces of a Dream. Uh, my stepmother, Deanna Harmon, um, named us that from Stanley Turrentine's album, Pieces of Dreams. And she thought that we were um, three pieces looking for a musical dream. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we got our name, basically. And we thought the name was kind of long. And yeah, we, we thought didn't it was like it at first. <laughs> no, we didn't like it at first. Yeah. <laughs> and, we thought, and we thought it was long. We wanted something short and hip, you know, <laughs> like in Commodore's uh, Gap Band, <laughs> you know. And, but it actually caught on and became a household word around Philadelphia. So, you know, yes. and, and then around the country. Yes, and it even today, on. yes. Now, <laughs> one of my favorite tunes, okay? I love this tune, well, I love all your music, but one of my favorites is Four Five Four from the album Imagine This. How yeah. did you guys yeah. come up with the name of that tune, Four Five Four? Actually, we didn't come up with that name. Um, <laughs> That was actually a song. You know who came up with the name of that song? Who? Moses Malone. And how so, did I know? Because his name. Because <laughs> uh, now he predicted that the Sixers were going to win the championship. Uh, they were just going to sweep. He said, fo, fo, fo. And that was his <laughs> prediction, right? So uh, they swept uh, the Lakers and they swept, uh, was it the Celtics? And Milwaukee, yeah. I think, was five games in, in the mm. middle. Mm. And uh, so it turned into four, five, four. So uh, that's what the song is actually about. It's about the uh, Sixers winning that championship. And Moses Malone is actually on the record saying four, five, four. Well, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Listen I, closely. I love that. Yeah, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's in there. And yep. uh, uh, we're not going to tell you how many takes it needed to get that. <laughs> that was to have some fun in the studio. I can tell you that making that making that um record. Oh we had, fun. we had fun making all our records. I could tell. I could tell. Especially you back then when we were in there with Grover. Because yes. uh, you know um it was definitely fun recording with him and we learned a lot, you know, uh just about about everything that's dealing with music, um, how to record, how the recording processes are done, mm -hmm. um, how to let the music kind of breathe, and you know, different spaces in music needs to shine through, and uh, and humility also. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, there, was, there was a whole lot that he taught us, you know. Plus, he was fun, too, you know. We shot pool over his house at times, and, mm-hmm. you know, we actually we had fun on tour with him, and we used to actually open up his Pieces of a Dream, and then we were in his band also. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so we got to do double duty, which was... That was double duty, on-the-job training like a On-the-job training. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sharp dresser. So, yeah. you know, we learned how to, like, rag from... Yeah, because you two be dressing pretty sharp. I see that. You two <laughs> dress you, you. all the time. You two are stepping out sharp from the shoes, from head to toe. Well, thank That's you. That's what we learned that from. <laughs> That's know? what we learned from Grover. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of your tunes, um, Mount Airy Groove. How did you come up yeah. with that? Because that's another one of your hits. Wow, now that was something. Um, we were messing around and we had just gotten this, this beatbox that um, had a mic, built in microphone and you could mm-hmm. record. Like, ooh, <laughs> that was a big thing, you know, <laughs> back then, right? So uh, we had it at our rehearsal because. A lot of times we'd be messing around with, you know, just jamming and come up with these ideas and then try and recreate it or record it, but forget what we, exactly what we did. So, you know, we, this beatbox came out with the built-in microphone. We got this thing like, okay, cool. And one day we just uh, turned it on and, you know, recording and, and came up with this groove. Uh, I, I think Kurt started with a beat and then, um, Cedric was doing like a, a, a sort of like a a Verdeen White, you know, bass line, you know, do do you know, you know, and uh, and I was thinking I'm sort of a Parliament funkadelic, you know, kind of octave thing, you know, with the, mm-hmm. just weird timing and weird notes and like, you know, just want to make it different. And next thing you know, we listened back like, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's make something out of it, mm-hmm. and that turned into Mount Airy Groove. Well, it's definitely a hit because when I hear it, I can I can imagine driving you know around Mount Airy or Wissahickon and Wissahickon Drive playing that. So that I think <laughs> the real I think the real thing that made Mount Airy Groove a hit was the uh, scratching part yes. and the bridge where uh, James is playing this sound and it sounds kind of like the old Atari TV tennis <laughs> type thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. That's that's when we really first were learning how to really use sounds and stuff, you know, and and really getting into the intricacies of the machines that we started to learn about. You know, that was the what Jupiter Eight. That was the Jupiter (laughs) Eight. Yeah, and we going way back. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. people thought that that was like you know a a scratching like from a record, you know, but that wasn't that. That was just like me playing this, this. Patch I sort of stumbled on and t- tweaking buttons and I didn't know what the heck I was doing with this thing and uh, so I like oh I, all right I saved it and I had this sound and I just played this rhythm you know and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't realize that oh it sounded like scratch and that wasn't really the intent at all mm-hmm. and um, but it, it turned out that that was like a thing and and next thing you know it was. Uh, it had become like this thing in the hip hop community mm-hmm. uh, to the point where Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five uh, used a part of that in one of their songs. And, and another artist named Tracy Lee used a part of Mount Airy Groove in, in mm-hmm. one of his songs. And, uh, you know, I, we talked to, uh, in meeting different rap artists, you know, over time, like, like Chubb Rock and KRS One. You're like, mm-hmm. man, oh, man, Mount Airy Groove, that was the jump. <laughs> that was the mm-hmm. staple. <laughs> yeah, that's now, one of our staple songs for sure. <laughs> yes, it is. I love it. Like I said, I love all, all of, all of your music. Now, with this pandemic, which I'll be glad whenever it's over, it has hit the music industry and it basically put everything to a stop. What has your group? What have you guys been doing um, during this pandemic? Basically, uh, preparing for our next release. We're due to release a new project in July, uh, around the end of July. And so we're basically, you know, preparing for that uh, at this point, but we've been trying to basically stay safe and and healthy, you know, just like everybody else. Um, You know, I mean, I don't know, we're we're just doing what we can do. I'm sure your family's loving being home too. Say again? 
I'm sure your families love you being home too for a little oh, bit. So you're not oh, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I love spending time in my studio. Um, I got a man cave with a pool table and all that down there. So I, I, I got things to do. <laughs> so. And, Me, you know, that's, that's why I cook. You know, we both cook, so yeah, know. yeah, cooking. That's a big thing. Then, uh, oh, I know you cook, James, because I know you and your wife, uh, Teresa. You call her your wifeager, which I love that. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. You, you guys post stuff on Facebook all the time, cooking. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a thing for a minute there, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of fun they're have like, your own yeah. cooking show how about that <laughs> yeah i haven't done that in, in a bit but um yeah lately been uh, concentrating on um writing and, and producing music you know for uh pieces of a dream and and a few others so uh yeah right. look out all right well we got we... stuff coming up mm -hmm. <laughs> here we go oh well, yes <laughs> well we're gonna take a break um, James, if you could show, we're going to show a clip or we're going to show a video. If you could intro it for us. This is a clip from uh, BET uh, taping. And um, wow, this is one of the old iterations of Pieces of a Dream. <laughs> there, there are many. And um, I, I'm not even going to tell you what year it's from, but uh, you, you'll be able to tell it it's it's old, so. Thank you. 
And welcome back. That was just an amazing video. I'm just sitting here and watching uh, James and Curtis just bopping along and, and James doing, doing, doing his thing at the house like he's actually on stage. Um, now, one thing I want people to know is if they have never seen you guys perform, they're in for a treat. Because I know James, the first, the well, the first time I actually saw pieces perform was at Brian Culberson's festival a few years ago, and okay. you and Brian were on the stage just going at it <laughs> on the on the keyboard, uh, and I think you were blindfolded too as well and playing. Yes. <laughs> so you know uh, that's the thing I've been doing uh, for for like a long time. Now. I played backwards and then. Uh, blindfolded and um, yeah so uh, that's it's I, I just get crazy with it you know yeah we see and I think at that show that you were talking about um, I think Brian and I were go playing backwards together yes like going backwards together forward, just, right? just going crazy people. on stage yeah. yes uh, going crazy and Curtis was just doing his thing on <laughs> on the drums that was just an amazing concert so like i said when when you guys start performing again people really need to go and see you i know i will be there um especially in november but you guys collaborate um with many people who would be your dream collaboration for pieces of a dream to collaborate with oh wow uh -huh. um, you know i would love to do something with stevie wonder I don't know if that's, you know, how far reaching that is or much of a possibility or if he's even, you know, open to doing stuff. But, you know, if uh, all things in perfect world, if I could just have, you know, my, my uh, way. <laughs> I always uh, say speaking into existence, you never know. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. 
What about you, Curtis? Uh, Quincy Jones. See? Wow. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's he's just, I mean, his his uh, writing and production has, I mean, he's been an icon for decades, you know, as far as his writing and production. And he's he's one of the masters of it. So, you know. He, he, he's actually one of my writing idols, <laughs> that's for sure. Really? Now, yeah. what what advice would you give new artists that are coming into this industry? I know it's hard right now, but what advice would you give new artists coming into the industry? Um, be original. Uh, don't try and sound like something that uh, you think has already succeeded because it's Usually something is exceeded because it was original. Somebody liked it for what it was, you know? So, um, you know, do, do your own thing and um, try, don't try to be famous, try to be good. <laughs> try to be good at, at your instrument at, or your voice or whatever it is, that, whatever it is that you're gonna do, you know, in life, whether it's music or anything, Just, you know, don't, don't try and be, famous just try and be good let everything else mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. and it will you know when it's when it's supposed to okay i would say do it from your do it from your heart um be sincere in what you're trying to do and let it come from right here you know um and like james said uh don't try to be like anybody else because then they're not getting the true you if you do that you know, uh, hone your craft mm -hmm. and and just have your own personality in your re in your music. Okay. You know, that way you can develop your own sound and people know you for for what you sound like. You know, That's people hear us people hear us on the radio and, say, and they know it's us because we have a certain sound. Yes. And that that's what any artist should ask, aspire to developing their own sound. Now, what and, and, you know, I, if I could just interject one one thing uh -huh, that uh -huh. Curtis mentioned that um, something I was just thinking about just today is that I don't know of any group that has the, the difference, you know, the breadth of variety of songs and music on their collection of albums. I mean, if you go back to our first to our current you're going to hear like straight ahead stuff. You're going to hear vocals. You're going to hear the funk. You're going to hear like some new jack swing. You're going to hear like tender stuff. You're going to hear like, uh, you know, um, uh, reggae type, you yes. know, Latin type stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to it run the gamut. I don't know any other group who, you know, will run so many genres across mm -hmm. and, and within their catalog yeah mm -hmm. uh, wow that that is great advice now really quick because we're coming to the end what projects or what shows do you guys have coming up i know you guys are going to be at the legacy in november mm -hmm. um in virginia and i will be there for that i'm definitely coming to that but what are the shows you guys the, have the, the burks jazz, burks festival. jazz festival. okay yeah. uh, all right I'll, um, what else? We have uh, the Andiamo in uh, Detroit or Warren. Okay. Uh, that's not till the end of the year, though. But we have, we got a few things coming up. So where can people go to find your your music and to find out where you guys are going to be? Uh, I well, you can look us up on Facebook. Um, we have we have our we have a Twitter page. We have uh, Instagram also. Uh, we also, you can get our material from iTunes, CD Baby, Amazon, uh, most of your, you know, CD outlets, and download. Yeah. So You yeah. can go to like Sam Goody and uh, Kyle <laughs> Rand. I heard the search Sam Goody in a long time. Oh my goodness. That's a blast from the past. <laughs> Down to Market Street, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You'll find us there. Oh, oh, well, it has been a pleasure <laughs> to have my homeboys here. 
<laughs> on this show with me. You guys are hilarious. You guys are awesome. You guys are iconic. And I love you guys to death. And thank I will you, see you. you. I I'm will gonna, see you in Virginia. I'm going to have a serious talk with him and try to calm him down. Yeah, you got a dick trying to calm him down? Please do. Please do. <laughs> but you guys can now go to bed. I thank you so much for being here with me today. Well, thank you. We'd, like to also, <laughs> we'd like to also thank our fans for all the years of support and love that they've shown us. And, you know, we, we really do love you guys. And, and thank you so much for allowing us to have a career because without you there's no us so awesome. indeed and thank you for having us dear yes, no definitely. worries thank you and to my audience thank you for joining us today and until next time aloha and god bless